help. I need to find the will of God. I'm just going to talk to you for just a few minutes uh, because I see that our time is uh, running on. And uh, Jesus taught us to pray and he gave us this prayer. And he said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be, everybody say it together, thy will be done, done. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the model prayer that he gave us. In, uh, people are uh, looking for the will of God when they should be seeking actually the kingdom of God because Jesus told us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Speaking of the natural things of life, uh, seek first his kingdom and do his will. His will is something we do. Uh, Paul wrote in the book of Romans in the 12th uh, chapter, and he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye renewed. He said, be ye renewed uh, by the, or transformed by the renewing of it. Be ye transformed by the renewing, renewed through transformation, uh, in the Holy Ghost by the renewing of your mind. And then he said, you can prove or you can know what is the good, perfect, and uh, acceptable and perfect will of God. You can know it. You can prove it. You can find it. You seek his kingdom. You present yourself as a living sacrifice and you will prove. It will bring you into that place of knowing and understanding what the will of God is for your life. The will of God, again, is something you must do rather than find. Uh, and you, you, you need to start seeking and seek. And I know you're seeking the kingdom of God. I know you're seeking to follow him. And you have presented your bodies a living sacrifice. Continue walking in that way. And uh, I want to say also that the will of God for you to, to, when you're trying to seek to prove and to know what is will, what the will of God, it's not necessarily a geographical location on the planet, but rather it is the position of you as a believer to be prepared to go or to stay, to speak, to listen, to give, to receive whatever and whenever he declares, uh, whatever he declares to you and that he has called you and that he has ministered and he wants to minister through you. And often the call is not a, you know, it's not going to be a bright light out of the heavens. It's not going to be a voice thundering it's not going to be a dream in the night. It's not going to be an angel that visits you along the way. Uh, it, is, it is simply walking, doing, living a Christian life in this world. Often the call, the call comes from the field and not necessarily from above. The, the call from the field is what you will hear when you get out. The call from souls that are lost and hungry and, and people who have never heard. If you have never been to a place where they don't know even about them, they don't know what a Bible is. They don't know who or what Jesus Christ is. If you've never been there, I would say every one of you owe it to yourself and to the Lord himself to find a place where you can go and see people like that and feel what they feel as far as feeling, you know, desperate, they're hungry. And that's called the call from the field. As an example, one example on that is, is, uh, the shepherd boy, David, when he went to take food to his brothers, he didn't, God didn't send him down to fight that giant. As far as we can read, you know, of course we know that's what's going to happen, but he did, he went there with, with uh, a couple of bags of groceries for his brothers and, and uh, a pint of uh, cold iced tea or something, you know, uh, for his family and some 
food stuff. You know, that's, that's why he went. He didn't go to fight Goliath. But while he was there, he heard, he heard that call. And the call was simply, who will come and fight? Give me a man that we may fight. And he heard the call from Goliath. If you will hear, if you will listen carefully, you will hear what the call is. And often we confuse, we confuse the will of God with a call. The will of God is not necessarily the call all the time. The call of God, the call with a passion and with a burden for the lost is what we need to find, what we need to search for. We need to look for the calling and not necessarily be looking for the will of God because again, the will of God is not something you look for, it's something you do. Now there is an element in, in this whole thing that we want to do the will of God and we want to do the will of God in the right place. But, you know, and that's even a little bit, uh, I think Brother Bernard mentioned it in his message uh, when he preached here at Global Connections. On Thursday night, he made the statement that, that if you're not actively involved in winning souls right now where you're at, trust me, you're not going to be actively involved anywhere. I mean, getting on the airplane and flying to Loris Lombovia or wherever you're, it's, you, I'm sorry, it's not going to automatically appear to you and there it is no you, you if you're not actively teaching bible studies witnessing to your neighbors your friends at school at work it it's not going to happen automatically when you get to get to the other side of the planet you need to get involved today and do the will of god the will of god is that nobody be lost the will of god is that is that people hear this gospel the will of God is in everything give thanks. He said, that's the will of God. Be thankful. It's an attitude. It's a frame of mind. It's a way of thinking. God's will is something that we do. The will of God is salvation for all mankind. One of the little cliches or whatever you call it that, that I like to repeat over and over again is the, the work and the, the activity of the church is to see people get saved. And Save people, stay saved. The two functions of the apostolic church, of the Christian movement, the two strengths of what we are involved in is, number one is to see, to, is, is to see lost people get saved. That's called evangelism. Mm -hmm. Evangelize, preach the word, teach the word, sing the word, uh, whatever talent, whatever ministry you have, that's how that's how you, you do the will of God is evangelism. And then the second part is to see saved people stay saved. And that's training. That's teaching Bible schools, training programs, seminars. And you might think, well, I'm not an evangelist. I'm not a teacher. But you know, in the, in the, in the work of the Lord, in the work of the church and missionary work, there are so many avenues so many various ways that you can serve, you can help and be involved with doing the will of God. The uh, will of God, it was the will of God for Jesus Christ to die and to be buried and to rise again. And it's the will of God that people repent of their sins, be baptized in Jesus' name and be filled with the Holy Ghost. The book of Psalms, and I'm going to stop with this. And if you have a question or something you'd like to ask that would pertain to everybody, uh, you can, we can try uh, to put it on the, the chat. I see some of them. If you want to write it to everybody, that's fine. Uh, and then we will go over some. And then let me know if there's something you'd like to ask that would pertain to everybody. If it's a personal thing, let's do that in, uh, privately. But in the book of Psalms, it says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And then that's, that's how you're going to find that place you're looking for, is the steps of a good man. Do the right thing. Present yourself a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reason. Be transformed by the renewing. Get a renewing in your mind, in your thinking, in the 
attitude that you have. If you've got an attitude that has a little bit of a discoloration to it or an attitude that might be, and you know, you know if you have one. If you don't know, you're not listening to your friends or your people around you because they're trying to tell you you got a bad attitude, you know? <laughs> and sometimes I'm just brass and caustic enough to tell you. So get a good attitude, you know, a good person, do the right thing. A good, the steps of a good man are ordered. They're directed by God. That's how you're going to find. And then that same 34th chapter of the book, that same 34th chapter, that same 34th chapter of the book of Psalms, the verse four, it said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Isn't that amazing? Now just stop for just a second and let's, let's look at that and delight yourself in the Lord that he may give you the debt. That doesn't mean he's the genie in the, and you rub the, and the genie comes out and I give you three weeks. That's not what he's talking about. You know, he's not saying that you're, you're going to get all the things. Oh, I can just see that new shiny new, uh, you know, BMW or Mercedes or Cadillac or this new home or this desire in my heart. No, that's not what he's talking about. He delight yourself. Delight. The word delight comes from a word that means to be delicate, to be soft, to be pliable, to be like clay in the hands of the master where he can mold you. And as that happens, the desires that come into your heart will be placed in your heart by the master. He will put those desires in your heart. Delight yourself in the in in the, in the and he will give you he will he will put the right things in your heart so you can be able to do what it said down there in verse twenty three the steps of a good man are ordered well I can't do good well if you delight yourself in the Lord you can if you let him be the potter and you be the clay it'll work it's like clay in the hands of a potter. Doing the will of God. Doing the will of God will lead you to the call of God. I promise. Do the will of God. Right now, right now, right now in hometown USA, hometown Canada, hometown wherever you're at. Do the will of God. Find somebody. Teach them a Bible study. Oh, I can't teach a Bible study. Honey, if you can flip pages and read, you can do a Bible study. Do a Bible study, tell witnesses somebody. And the least you could do is invite him to church. That's the easiest way. You know why a lot of people don't come to church? Nobody's ever asked them, invited them, invite them to church. That's how you start being a missionary. We want you in the Europe Middle East region. We want to see you there. We've got we've got cities that have never been reached in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Northern Europe. We've got Central Asia. We've got nations in Central Asia. Brother Mark Schutz, he wants to tell you about those countries. And uh, Brother Adam wants to tell you about countries in the Gulf states in the Middle East. And Brother Parker wants to tell you about North Africa and the Mediterranean. There are cities that are looking for you. Brother Kelly wants to tell you about the Nordics and about the Great Britain and Ireland, there are countries, there are cities. We had an associate missionary go to the little tiny country of Andorra. Yeah, there they are, the BBs. They were in Spain. We made it known, we need somebody to go to Andorra. And they, they here we are, they went. And you know what? They were, not, they were not fully appointed missionaries. They were associate missionaries, short-term missionaries. And they started a church. They started a group that's still going on right now in Andorra, little tiny country. Andorra is sandwiched between Spain and France. Great work. You can do the same thing. Praise God. God bless. Do you have questions? Let me see. I'm look, let me look at my thing over here. Uh, if you want information about Western yeah. Europe, there's Paul. Paul Brochu gave you his email address. Okay, somebody asked a question, where do they need Bible school teachers right now in the Europe Middle East region? I will tell you, reach out to uh, Brother uh, Kelly, Robert Kelly, his email address, he put his AOL address in there. That's Northern Europe, rkelly at 608 at, 608 at AOL.com. I will tell you all of our, all, all of our uh, area coordinators' emails is their first letter of their name, their last name, at, if you write this down, 
first the first letter of their name last their whole last name at i a g sounds like i am global at i a g dot email out okay mm -hmm. that's an unusual email address you don't see that very often yeah, but dot email so and brother there there's somebody just put it on their uh paris france at iag dot email it's on your chat you can see that so and brother shoots also has just given you somebody for you to reach out to if you want to be involved in teaching we have there are multiple places we've got places in the in uh the northern uh eurasia area that's into russia into central asia uh that we need somebody right now to go and work with brother shoots uh, as well as into Northern Europe with the Kellys, and uh, and I will I would be remiss to miss to miss Eastern Europe. We need help in Eastern Europe, and so uh, there's a lot. What about working in the Middle East? Uh, if you want to know about working in the Middle East, reach out to Brother Parker, uh, Brother Adam. Write to me. The Middle East and the Gulf states and even parts of Central Asia are very very uh, sensitive. They're very high risk. And so we can't say a whole lot here, but write to uh, the, the address that was given or to one of those area coordinators or to myself, and we will st send you, we can, we can communicate better that way than uh, on an open forum. So, and the Sherry's have also uh, put contact at World Connect, that one from the Sherry's who, are, uh, who work in some of those very high, highly sensitive countries of the Middle East. And so there's the Sherry's address. You can reach out to them. And uh, is there a work in Jordan? Yes, there's a work in Jordan. We have Sister Nancy Mansfield was just on here, the Sherry's. Uh, we have, uh, we need help there too. They've got a Bible school. Reach out to Jonathan Sherry. Are there virtual counseling? Virtual counseling. Virtual counseling. Uh, Yes, there are. There are. There are virtual counseling. You, and if you if you are a counselor, if you're a licensed or a certified counselor, uh, please send me a note and let me know what it is and give me a little bit of more a little bit more information about that, Joseph. Let me know a little more on that because yes, we do need some. In fact, right now we could use some. They want some advice on how to prepare financially for people with families. Okay, how to prepare financially with families. I see that question has just popped in here. Uh, if you are a family, you can do it. You know, you do have to, it takes a little bit uh, uh, of uh, time. It's work <laughs> uh, and a sacrifice to get the funds together. Now, there, we've had families go, families of four and five. Uh, there was a family, an AIM family that was a family of uh, six, four children, mom and dad, went as AIM missionaries and lived on the field for five years and were, did a great, great work. So, you know, that is a possibility. The, the BB family, I just mentioned to them, that was a family of four and they, they did it. But it was sacrifice. It was sacrifice. And so if you have a family and you want to go, you know, people wanting to say, ah, I don't want to do AIM. I got to go straight through because I got to down to the money. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? You can do it. You can do it. It has been done. It is sacrifice. I'm going to tell you that again. It's sacrifice. My family and I, we went as AIMers. And, and um, in fact, we went way, way back. It was back in the 70s, 80s, wasn't it? 80, 80, 1982. We went as AIMers and we had a little boy. And when we left the United States, my wife was seven months pregnant. Now that was stupid, but we did it. I mean, we did it. I mean, we didn't realize seven months pregnant women shouldn't be flying on an international flight for the first time. You know what? It's all right. We lived. Our kids are living. They're doing something for God today. So you can do it. You can do it. We, we went to a country and lived there, had a baby. My wife had a baby in a foreign country. First time ever in that country. Don't be afraid. God will take care of you if he calls you. And how do I know if he's called? That's good. Did anybody ask that question? Okay, nobody asked, so I won't tell you. I need to look on there. How do you know if God calls you? I'll tell you what. If you see the need, if you see it, that's the call from the field. That's the call. Just because you think you're, the, you're not the only, you thought everybody saw it. You're not, everybody saw this. I'm not the only one that saw this. No, you might have been the only one that saw it. That's the call. Somebody else have a question? Let me look. Just be sure and check those. Many people have posted in 
If you if you miss the email addresses, because I think when we sign off here, all the chats disappear. I'm not sure how that works. But uh, scroll now and get the email address because we're going to sign off because I think we're just about over time. Uh, we got two minutes left. And then there is coming up, there's going to be a, uh, a time with uh, Paul Brochu. I think he's going to be taking you, taking you uh, on a lunch in Paris. Uh, Brother Brochu, are you still out there? Are you going to pay for that? Could you address so, one last question? So I think if he, he's going to buy you a cup of Paris Parisian coffee right on the streets in Paris. I think I saw Baron with him. As a result of COVID-19, are there any countries open at this time? Yes, there are. There are countries open. We have short-term uh, missionaries as well as our fully appointed missionaries returning to the field. Uh, the, the, the catch is, is that if you catch the virus, then you, are, uh, you need to plan to stay there for a few weeks. Maybe that's what we need to do is get you over there. Uh, <laughs> Okay, the, the UK session is starting in two minutes and um, there's a UK, there's the virtual coffee also is gonna start up. We've got the UK session and there's a lot of, there's an interact, uh, interaction with missionaries. It, it's all right if you're just a little bit late, Brother Sister Kelly will understand, Paul Brochu, Brother Brochu, you'll understand. They were very busy with the regional director at our uh, Europe Middle East um, interactive, okay? Check out the, check out the uh, email addresses posted for more information. If you need any more information, Sister Tuttle gave you my email address. You can write me. I'm slow on email, so be careful doing that. Don't get mad. Just let me, just let me know that you, you're interested, and we will get to you eventually. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for joining the EME uh, Interactive. Uh, this interactive. I'm going to close with a word of prayer and ask the Lord to bless you and guide you. He will, as you do what, what is right, as you do the good things that you're supposed to, and you delight and become pliable, become as a piece of a lump of clay in the hand of the potter, you will do the right thing and you will end, uh, end up in the mission field somewhere in the Europe, Middle East region, I'm sure, uh, or one of the other regions of the world. So God bless you. We love all of you. Thank you so much. Appreciate your uh, participation. Let's pray. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch every one of these, Lord God, these, these young people and these who have joined in, some who may be able not to go, but they can pray. They can stand in the gap and go as a missionary on their knees and they can pray and they can intercede and they can be, Lord God, a, a connection in the, in the spirit realm. They can perhaps support and financially help one of these AIM missionaries or associates, short-termers to go to the field. I pray you would give them wisdom and direction open. I pray, God, their understanding. Touch the missionaries who, who listened into this. I want to thank God for those who have who, who took time out of their day, some of them it's very late in the evening, and have joined us. Thank God that you uh, have joined, uh, that they have joined us, and that you, God, will be a blessing to them, that you, Lord God, put it in their hearts and minds, that you, Lord God, will direct their steps, and I thank you for it. Bless, I pray, God, these young people, these families, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. Amen, amen, amen. God bless all of you. Thank you so much. You guys have been a great audience and this has been enjoyable. Uh, we look forward to meeting some of you in person very soon one day. God bless you. Goodbye. <laughs>